bullet. In this video, we'll be talking about a type of machine learning algorithm called k-means clustering. The goal of k-means clustering is to classify some mystery point based on some information about it into one of k classes. Um, k is the number of classes you want to separate your space into. For our example, as in many of our other machine learning videos, we'll be using the example of trying to classify a fish as a salmon or a tuna based on stuff about it. In this case, its weight and its length. So you see in the space, I have several points. All these red circles represent tuna and all these orange triangles represent salmon. So pretend now you got this gray X, a mystery fish with this following weight and height or length. And you're trying to figure out, should I assign it a tuna or a salmon? Naturally, we would say tuna because it's, you know, in this area that tuna are in. But how does k-means clustering deal with this? The best way to demonstrate this algorithm is literally just to show it in action, I think. So, as said before, the first thing you have to do is decide on your k. That's one of the drawbacks of this algorithm is that you need to know how many groups your space is divided to into uh, prior to running this algorithm. And sometimes you just don't know. But in this case, we do know that there's two groups, salmon and tuna. So you take the number of groups you have and you assign that many initialized means. Uh, means in this case, uh, in terms of average, you want to think of it like that. So let's just say I choose one initial value right here and I choose one initial value, let's say right here. We're going to see that this is a pretty bad initial approximation, but we're going to see how k-means fixes this so we get the right classification. So once you have these two values, this mean one, mu1 one and mu2, you can think of it that way. What you do for each point in the plane is figure out, is it closer to the first mean or the second mean? And you go ahead and assign it to that point. So for example, if this top one is the one that represents salmon and the bottom one represents tuna, then anytime a point um, of all these points we see is closer to the bottom one, we say it's a tuna. If it's closer to the top one, we say it's a salmon. It turns out there's a really easy way to divide the plane if we have these two points. Basically, you just put the line that's immediately between these two guys, and I'm going to shift this up a little bit. Okay, so this is the line which cuts off whether it's closer to the bottom point or the top point. Okay, so for example, all of these points up here are closer to the top mean, and all of the points down here, of which there's only three or four, are closer to the bottom mean. So that means all the points below the line get assigned as tuna, all the points above get assigned as salmon. We see that all the salmon are correctly classified, but the tuna are split in a pretty bad way right now. So the next thing that k-means clustering does is, based on all the points that are assigned to one mean or the other, it takes the average of all those points. So it takes the average x, average y, and if we have more dimensions, it takes the average of all those other dimensions, and it reinitializes these means to those average values. So let me show you graphically what that means. It's a little bit easier for the bottom points because there's only three or four of them. So the average value seems like it's about here where I drew that little dot. So what happens is this mean shifts up and its new location is right there. Okay. Now the same thing happens with these points. We see that there's more salmon, so it's going to be pulled in that direction. Let's just say the average value is something like there. Okay. So this mean right here moves to its new value and the algorithm basically just reinitializes it reclassifies all of the points in our space uh, to now see if it's closer to this mean or this mean. And what that does effectively is shifts our line so that it is now this line. I didn't explicitly uh, say it. Let me shift this down because I want to make one more iteration. Um, so I didn't explicitly say it, but the way I get this line is basically just saying this is the line that is equidistant between these two points. So every point on this line is equidistant to both points, which means that if you're on this side of the line, you're closer to this point. If you're on this side of the line, you're closer to this point. And you've probably seen me fudging around these uh, points here. I promise this is just for the explanation. So now that we have our two new means and our new line, we reclassify all the points. So that means all these guys right here are classified as tuna. All these guys up here are classified as salmon. So we're almost there. We just have a couple of mistakes right here. So we reinitialize. So this guy, gets set to the mean of this cluster, so about right there. Uh, and this guy gets set as the mean of this cluster, so that's going to be further in this direction. And we reinitialize, so this line looks more like this now, right? And now we reclassify. So all these get set as tuna, all these get set as salmon. Visually, we see that we've succeeded, but the algorithm doesn't know that yet. 
So what does it do? It recalibrates the means. So now it's perfectly in the middle of this tuna cluster. This guy's perfectly in the middle of the salmon cluster and the line's honestly not gonna shift that much. So how does the algorithm know when to stop? Basically, it knows when to stop. It, it'll stop now, basically, because there's been no change in the assignments, which means that all these that were classified as salmon before are still classified as salmon. All these classified as tuna in the last iteration are still classified as tuna, so it can go ahead and stop. That is literally how k-means clustering works. Um, it just keeps uh, shifting around these means. And I've drawn a simple example with two means. You could have three or four, and you wouldn't have a single line anymore. You would have kind of a triangle or four lines if you had more clusters, which divide up your plane. But basically, the means keep getting reinitialized until there's no more uh, change in the labels. Or you can set some other stopping criteria like 100 or 1,000 iterations. That's basically how k-means clustering works. Now let's talk about some of the pros and cons of k-means clustering. The main pro, I would say, is its simplicity. And that is in terms of simplicity of understanding it. Um, we saw that it's we went through it in a, just a couple minutes. And also its simplicity in computation. Think about all you have to do each iteration. Once you have your means, you have to calculate the Euclidean distance um, in the plane from each of your points, which isn't a very expensive operation. It's just a couple subtractions, squaring some numbers. Um, so, it, and then once you have those uh, labels, you basically just classify all your points, and then you would see if the classification has changed from the previous iteration. And if it has, then you would just reinitialize and take the mean of your new cluster. So there's not that much high-level computations going on. That's the main thing it has going for it. Of course, it's going to have its limitations. Usually when something is really simple, there's cases it just can't account for. So let's look at this case specifically. Uh, again, we have two clusters, and as human beings, we see that there's a very natural grouping to them. What we would do is, what we would want to do is basically take the circle and uh, use that as our divider, and we'd have a pretty good uh, classification here. But let's see what happens with k-means. Let's say that we set one mean initially here. I think I lost my other mean here. Okay, well, that's fine we set the other mean to be right here, okay? So what happens is it sets the middle point, let's just say that's right there, and it classifies everything above as a salmon or orange. It classifies everything below as a tuna or red, for example. Now, of course, what happens is it shifts the means. So these honestly aren't gonna shift much. Maybe this moves down a little bit. Maybe this guy moves up a little bit. Let's say the line um, for that reason stays the same because all you've done is move these guys closer to each other due to the symmetry of the problem. So let's say that in the second iteration, nothing gets classified differently. So it thinks it's succeeded, but obviously it's failed miserably, right? Um, it's basically gotten half of them wrong because well, something like that. It's classified everything above as orange, even though several of them are red, everything below as red, even though several of them are orange. So when there's not a good uh, linear separation, like up here, or also if the cluster sizes are very, very different, like if you have, for example, uh, a little cluster of points over here, and then you have a massive cluster of points over here, that's also going to cause some problems because k-means tends to uh, pick about the same number of points in each of the k clusters in the end, um, which you might not necessarily want. Right here, it just it just so happens that this cluster is smaller than this cluster, so k-means will have a problem there too. And of course, another problem we noticed in the beginning of the video was you need to know this k beforehand. This doesn't really find the k for you. There are other algorithms that uh, will find the k, but this is not one of them. So you need to know how many classes you want beforehand, which isn't always practical. So oh, I found the little dot here. Okay, so that is uh, k-means clustering in a nutshell. So we'll be looking at ways to overcome this using other models going forward. Um, and we'll see how they do better than k-means clustering and the cons they have as a result. Okay, so until next time.